Hello, welcome back to another video. Now in this one we're going to be taking a look at perpendicular lines. In particular, why do we have this formula that if you multiply the gradients of two perpendicular lines you always get minus one. Okay, and this is one of them formulas that is very much just told to students and they're asked to remember it without really giving without really being given an explanation as to why it works. So today I, I sort of wanted to give a little insight as to why it works. This isn't going to be a rigorous proof or anything, but we're just going to get a sort of feel for why it works. Okay, so I've called the blue line L1 and the red line L2. So let's just write down the equations of these lines as best we can. So using y equals mx plus c. So L1 is m1 x plus c1, L2 is m2 x plus c2. So m1 and m2 are the gradients, c1 and c2 are the y-intercepts. Right, now let's work out the gradient of, say, L1. Okay, so to do this we'd normally draw a triangle like this, normally a right angle triangle, and the gradient is the distance in y's, take away the distance in x's. So I'll just write that down. So we normally calculate it something like this, y2 take away y1, x2 take away x1. And you might also see this called something like the rise over the run. And they mean the exact same thing. So let's suppose this distance, this vertical distance is a, so that's the distance in y's, and the distance in x is, is b. Let's see what happens if we spin this triangle round to here. Well, if you imagine we're going to have something that looks like this, and the lengths aren't going to change, so this time a is going to be on the top and b is going to be on the side. So, we can see that the, the gradient of L1 is m1 which equals um, a over b yeah the distance in y's over the distance in x's now let's have a look at the gradient of l2 if you think the triangle's being flipped so instead of having b as a difference in y's we're now going to have minus b and the diff distance in x's hasn't changed that's just a okay so now let's multiply these two gradients so m1 times m2 well, that's a over b times minus b over a. The a's are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with minus b over b. And now the b's are going to cancel out. So we're just going to be left with minus 1. And there you have it. That is sort of an intuitive reason as to why gradients multiply to minus 1. So I really hope you have enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Comment if there's anything you'd like to see. See you next time. Bye-bye.